Hello, everybody. Hello, it's Mo. It's time for Bible study. I'm going to give you all a little while to get on here so everybody can come on and study the Bible with us today. Praise God. Okay, this says share, the bo share this with others, but I'm going to X that out. So, um, Hello, everyone. I'm going to turn the light on. It's a little dark in here for me to read, so I'm going to turn that on. back. Okay, so I don't know who's on right now, but I'm going to give people a few minutes to come on. But I want to teach a message called One Day at a Time. One day at a time. Remember that show? One day at a time, one day at a time. So up on the beat, up on the beat. Jen Dugan, you're my age. You remember what one day at a time was? Remember Schneider? Remember Schneider on there? I don't remember the other people's names, but I remembered Schneider. He was the maintenance man. So sometimes we call Tommy Schneider because he's always fixing everybody's houses and stuff. So um, welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Wednesday at 1, so it's time to study the Bible, everybody. And uh, I'm excited to be on. I hope everybody had an awesome Christmas. It is December 30th, um, 2020. A couple more days of 2020. We are almost through 2020. And then we can actually say hindsight's 2020, right? And we can be into 2021. That is going to be something I know everybody's really excited about. Um, yes. Now the song is stuck in your head. It's stu been stuck in mine since I picked the name of this, uh, uh, since I picked the name of this message today. So um, I just, I am so excited to go into the new year um, focused on the Word of God, focused on keeping my eyes on Jesus and not getting distracted by a zillion other things because time is of the essence, amen? Time is of the essence. And so we want to make sure that we're spending time finding out what God has for us. So I feel like today he kind of gave me, gave me what he wanted me to speak on during my quiet time this morning. I just downed a banana because I'm starving for lunch. And I was like, I can get through teaching. If I just eat a banana, then I eat lunch after because <laughs> I was running a little late. So, um, but hello, Francis. I'm glad you're on. I'm so glad Jen's on. I'm so glad. Let me see if I put my glasses on it. Kyla, so glad you're all on. Okay, so let me clean my glasses here while we start out and saying, um, we have to learn how to live in the spirit with the Lord one day day at a time one day at a time has become so now the song is just ringing in my head too but it has become such a way of life for me and that is how i stay in peace and you know i thought what a perfect shirt to wear for uh today's teaching not today satan because guess what it's always today and so we're never gonna let satan steal our days we're not gonna let him steal any more of our peace we're not going to let him steal any more of our joy. We're not going to let him steal any more of our time because our time here on earth is limited and we need to reach people with the gospel. Amen? So we need to love our people. We need to make a difference while we're here. And so if we're not distracted with worrying about yesterday and worrying about tomorrow and we live in today, we can do everything God's called us to do today. And so what does the word have to say about that? So, um... I wanted to tell you why this came to me and I felt like God wanted me to teach on this. So I started writing in my journal here. I started writing in this new journal that I got for Christmas from a friend. And um, and I was just like, oh, a fresh journal. I can start writing in that. And, and I just was like, I just was like, all these fresh new white pages and stuff. And I was so excited. I get to about my third paragraph of just talking to God and saying, you know, um, Bless my mom and dad. Lord, we just I just thank you for all this time I've had this Christmas with my family and I'm just writing these things and I felt convicted where God was like, what happened to your other journal? And I'm like, oh, my other journal is sitting right here. And Francis, you would probably recognize this. You and your beautiful Bible study group gave this to me as a blessing. It's called a prayer map. But guess what, y'all? I, I was like, oh, well, I'm, I've got my new journal I'm writing in now and it's, this is fresh and, and I felt like God was like, one journal at a time. One journal at a time because when you get all over the place with all these different journals, you can't stay focused. 
And that really was like, for me, I just thought, okay, because it's true. When I've had a couple journals going, God will speak something to me and I'll write it in something and then I'll go back to try to find it and I can't find it. And I'm just like, what, what, oh, that was in that other journal. What I do with that one? Da, da, da. So I felt like God was showing me, you still have half a journal here that you haven't used. You know, you kind of like ended here and you've still got all this journal, like one journal at a time. And guess what, y'all? We need to be living one day at a time with God. Otherwise, we get so distracted and all over the place that we can't remember what God actually called us to do. Amen? That's spiritual. That right there, when God was showing me that with my journals, we do that with life. How about we live one day at a time and we stop worrying about 10 years from now or 10 years ago? Amen? And we can actually learn how to stay in the moment with God and we can be so much more focused, so much more um, at ease and with a peaceful heart when we can learn to live in today and not be worried about tomorrow and worried about yesterday. You know, I know y'all have heard me say this before, trust and obey all that's real is today. Trust and obey all that's real is today. The only thing that we have any control over is today. Today. That's it. And the only person we have control over is ourselves. Amen? We don't have control over anything except ourselves. We have self-control. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit. We don't have people control. Come on, y'all. That's the truth. You know, we weren't given the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and people control. No, we were not given that. We were given love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Self-control. So the only thing we have control over is today, and the only person we have control over is ourselves. And so we have to learn to stay in that and stay in that lane with God. And so God was like, you know, focus on one journal at a time, Mo, while you focus on one day at a time. And so I want us to go to where that is in Scripture Let's go to, um, you know, I just kind of wrote this, Matthew 6, 34. I know you guys know this. I want to tell you something right now as you're, you're with me studying. All throughout 2021, Unforsaken Women, all of our teaching on Wednesdays, well, you know, there will be times where there'll be a special word God's going to give us to speak or a special thing, but we're going to focus on the red letters in the Bible. We're going to focus on Jesus' teaching to us because, uh, hello, who better to learn from than Jesus, our teacher, amen? That's who we need to be learning from. So we're going to go to Matthew 6 and what he has to say about that. And um, that's in verse 34, but I want us to start with verse 25. And you guys know this. If you have followed any of my teaching, you know what a hot mess I am in my thinking without the word of God. And, and I need the word. So, so this is where Jesus teaches about worry. You know I've taught on this scripture before. Verse 25. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about what your body, what you'll wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Come on, y'all. That's a word right there. What good is our worrying doing? We're like rocking in rocking chairs, not going anywhere. That's what worry is. Turn it to prayer, y'all. But verse 28 goes on to say, Why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, tomorrow thrown in the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. And your heavenly Father knows you need them. I love that right there. He knows. He knows what we need, y'all. He already knows all of our needs. Yes, he still wants us to say them. He still wants us to come to him with prayers and petition, but he already knows what our needs are. He loves us. He's got us, he's got us written on the palms of his hand. He knows us so well. He says, for the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Here's verse 34. This is our focus scripture that we're doing today. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. 
Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that kind of funny? It's not really that comforting that when it when he goes on to that, like, eh, tomorrow's gonna have issues too, right? It's like, worry about today. Think about today. Think about what you can do today. Trust and obey all that's real is today. You know, that's the truth, y'all. Um, none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And yesterday's gone. We can't do anything about it but repent. Amen? So if we've messed up yesterday or we're worried of, and, and we're focused on that or we're focused on our worries of tomorrow, guess what we miss out on? Today. And guess who wins? The devil. He steals our today when we're focused on tomorrow or yesterday. So I always, I, I say this, I'm just like, we need to stay in the moment with God. We need to focus on what do we have control over today. That's it. Because Jesus is like, I already know what you need. I already know what you need tomorrow. I already know what, what where you messed up yesterday. And his word actually says he's already forgiven us for it. If we've, if we've asked for his forgiveness and we've repented, then we need to let it be under the blood. Because the blood of Jesus, thank God the blood of Jesus covers our sins of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? And so we need to just put it under the blood, leave it at the cross, and start fresh. I had, you know, I think about this. Had a yucky mom day yesterday? Let it go. Trust and obey all that's real is today. Had a, a yucky wife day. Maybe we weren't as encouraging as we should have been. Let it go. Today is a new day. Stay in the moment with God. You know, worried about, got caught up in worrying about tomorrow too much. And you're just like, oh my gosh, where did my morning go? I was all over the place thinking about all the worries of tomorrow. Where did my, let it go. Put it under the blood and start fresh. Let it go. We have to stay in the moment with God. One journal at a time, one day at a time. How about this, y'all? One minute at a time. How about one minute at a time? We need to learn how to stay in the moment with God. And, you know, it's like I get up in the morning and I can have all the best laid plans. I can be like, I look at my, we should, y'all, we should have plans, you know, plans, plans. We need to make a plan. We need to have a, have a schedule. It's good to have it in your phone or have it be like a daily plan or whatever it is. But we also have to be willing to say, okay, that was my idea of what my plan was, but you're God. And God, you get the last word. And if you're going to change my plans, then I want to be part of your plans because you know the plans you have for me, says the Lord. Plans to prosper me, not to harm me. Plans to give me hope in a future. So if your plans are to give me hope in a future, then whatever's written in my daily planner is junk compared to that, right? We want God's plans for our life. So we have to be prepared to, if he changes our path a little that day, go with it. God will put people in front of us who need us. God will say, mm, yeah, that was great. You thought you were going to work at the store today, Mo, but instead you're teaching today because they need you or whatever, it, you know, whatever it is, you got to be willing to drop your own agenda and pick up God's. Amen. Drop your own agenda and pick up his. He's like, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. We have to learn how to stay in the moment with God and, and go one day at a time. Because guess what, y'all? I have learned. I have learned this over years and years and years of being pulled in so many directions, this like like worries of the past, guilt of the past. Oh my gosh, feeling guilty about, about things that I did 10, 20 years ago, feeling guilty about that. And Satan's totally stole my joy so many times when God's like, I don't even remember what you're talking about. I told you it's on, you know, there's been times like you're just like, oh yeah, that's in the sea of forgetfulness. Like the Bible says, God doesn't just forgive me, he forgets. So when I keep bringing it up to him, he's like, great, Ma, I forgot that yesterday, but thanks for reminding me. That's a thing, y'all. When I get caught up in that and we get caught up in that, God's had to show me, Mo, you just missed out on so many of the beautiful things I had for today because God's grace is poured out in the moment, y'all. His grace is not poured out in 10 years ago. It's not poured out in 20 years ago. His grace is in the moment. So if we want to stay in the race, Rely, we got to rely heavily on grace, amen? We got to stay in the race, focusing on today with him. His grace is in the moment. God's word says, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in your weakness. His grace is sufficient for today, y'all. So he's going to be with us tomorrow, but God's with us today, and we need to stay in that moment with him today. So let's go to Matthew 10, verses 29 through 30. Okay, 
So the, the word says here in Matthew 10, let's start with 28 instead of, yeah, I did write down 28 through 31. Sometimes the old eyes aren't as great as they should be. Okay, um, Matthew 10, 28 says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Oh, y'all, if you do not think God has our today, you're, you're crazy. I mean, you're crazy. If you, don't, if you don't think he has a hold of it, he says, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? But not one of these sparrows, not one bird will fall to the ground apart from your father's knowing and caring about it. And even the very hairs on your head are numbered. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He knows how many hairs are on my head, how many hairs are on Nancy's head, how many hairs are on Pam's head. He knows how many hairs are on our head, y'all. Do you think we're not worth more than many sparrows? He cares for the birds of the air. He makes sure that the birds eat. He makes sure that the birds have enough to, to, to feed them through the winter. He makes sure that they know how to fly south for the winter. He's taught, he cares about the birds. He says, how much more? Even that, not, I just love that. He's like, don't be afraid. You're worth more than birds. We are worth more to God than the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. He cares for them. He takes care of them. He takes care of this beautiful, he makes sure the sun comes up every morning and the moon comes out at night, y'all. He cares about every detail and we are still top on his list. We are. The Bible says we're the apple of his eye. We're the apple of God's eye. He cares about us. He loves us so much that he's got today in the palm of his hand. He's got us in the palm of his hand. He's engraved our name in the palm of his hand. And we need to remember that. Our pastor spoke about that this week. I said, when we can get to the point where we trust God, period, we can stay in peace. Listen to this, y'all. Everything about living in the moment, trusting God, and learning how to stay in peace is about learning that to say, I trust you, God, period. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the next part of the sentence is. I trust you, God, whether I'm feeling well or not, period. I trust you, God, whether there's money in the bank account or not, period. I trust you, God, whether um, my kids are following you or not, period. It's, that's the thing. Once we can get to the point where we're just like, I trust God, period, end of sentence, we can stay in peace. We can learn to stay in peace. Realizing we're priceless to God, realizing we are priceless to him, helps us to stay in the moment with him and helps us to not worry about tomorrow because we know God's going to be there with us tomorrow. He tells us, he promises us he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. doesn't matter what we go through, y'all. We get worst case scenarios in life. Worst case scenarios happen. They do. We can think up some worst case scenarios and guess what? Sometimes they happen in life and sometimes they don't and we need to thank God that they don't. But sometimes worst case scenarios happen. But guess what? We're never alone in it. We can handle it because we're never alone. We're never alone, not one more second, not during the day, not during the night, not, not at, when we're at home, not when we're in the car, not when we're at the store, not when we're in the middle of a crowd or when we're all alone with no other people. We are never alone because we carry Holy Spirit. He's in us. He's not just with us. He's in us. He's Emmanuel with us, but he's also God in us now. The hope of glory. And so we need to know that we are able to handle whatever comes our way and not worry about tomorrow because we know who holds tomorrow. That's God and who's going to be with us. James 4. Let's go to James 4 right now. I love the book of James. Sometimes I'll just listen to James and try to memorize it so I can like say the next part that's coming along because James has so much wisdom. Talk about being James. That was Jesus' brother. Jesus' brother here on earth, right? You know, you think you got some big shoes to fill, right? How about some sibling rivalry there? You got a really cool sister, a little real cool brother that you're just like, oh, if you could be more like your sister. Think about how Jesus, <laughs> Jesus being your brother, right? Think about Jesus being your brother. Just like, 
Yep, never gonna be that good. Never gonna be that perfect. Come on, y'all, you know. Think about it, he lived, he walked, he breathed, he had brothers and sisters while he was here. I can't imagine being Jesus's brother or sister while I was here. I'd be like, yeah, I just can't live up to that one. I'm trying, but you know, come on, y'all. Gotta be silly a little bit. Okay, James 5, James 4, verses 13 through 16. This is where we need to not focus on tomorrow. We need to focus on today. James says in, in James 4, 13, we will go to this or that city, spend a year, carry on business and make money. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. Oh my gosh, y'all. We do that, don't we? We're just like, this year, I am going to be the most fit person in the world. This year, I'm going to, I am going to reach 2,000 people with the gospel. This year, yeah, we do this, right? We do this whole like, and, I, and God's like, it's great. I'm glad you're being positive, but the, the Bible actually says, "Don't boast about tomorrow. You don't even know. You're a you're a mist. You're a vapor. This world, this life is a vapor. Like you don't even know what tomorrow has to bring." How about you say, "God willing, if it's God's will, and I know it's God's will that he that we reach as many people as possible. Lord, help me to help me, Lord, to reach two thousand people this year with the gospel. Right? Like, let's say that. Let's be like, let's turn it around and and put it where it actually belongs in the hands of the Lord, because we need to trust Him with our tomorrow. Right? We could be like, God willing, my you know my um I call her my Haitian mama. She's she's our our Haitian minister, or minister missionary. Um, Jackie Laguerre, she's such a wise, wise, wise woman. Jackie would always say, God willing, God will, God will you come for dinner tomorrow. Right? Jackie would say that to me. She's like, God willing, come to dinner tomorrow. And I would always be like, yeah, Jackie, I'll come to dinner. She's like, oh, no, no, no. God will, God will you come to dinner tomorrow. And I was like, yes, God willing, I'm coming over for dinner tomorrow. You know what, y'all? What It puts it in God's hands. It puts our lives back in his hands where... We can actually be in peace. We can actually be in peace. Yes, God wants us to make plans. It is smart to make a plan. You, we've got we've to gotta make a plan. We've got to make to-do lists. We've got to do that sort of thing because when we get organized, that's when we can do more, right? But we have to recognize God's going to change our plans sometimes. He's going to intervene. He's going to get all up in our business sometimes, y'all. He is. And we have to let him. We can't be like... Nope, I'm not doing that, Lord, because you told me I was doing this, and I'm sticking to the original. And da da da, because God be like, mm, you really didn't hear me right there. I didn't tell you to do that, or you know what I mean. You don't know, y'all. We have to truly, truly, truly let God lead. Let God be the leader of our tomorrow. Trust that every day is a gift, and don't be like, ah, uh, tomorrow I'll do this, or tomorrow I'll go into that city, and tomorrow I'll do that. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We have to stay in the moment with God. And I think staying in the moment with God means let's do all we can do every day to advance the gospel. Let's do everything we can do every day to love God, love people, make disciples, right? Because every day is a gift and God's grace is poured out in today. So I think if you're, if you're following God's plan and you're doing what he's calling you to do and you're like, okay, God, I'm going to do everything I can today, believe me, he's going to pour out his anointing on you, staying in the moment. I love it. I'm, I'm like, I feel like this is such a sweet spot time for me because, I mean, I'm absolutely loving being a, a wife and being a mother of grown kids and being a Mimi and, and being able to, you know, when Brookie, my daughter-in-law, be like, Hey, can Jackson come over this morning so I can run to the gym? I'm like, yes. I get so excited when I can say yes. You know, sometimes I have stuff on my schedule, but to be able to say, you know, yes, that's an awesome surprise. I'll do that. That's like, I'm trying to decide, like make every day count because I love my grandbaby and I love spending time with him and I want as much time as I can with him. You know, if I get a chance to go spend time with my mom and dad, I'm like, every day is precious. 
precious. I'm like, I called my dad this morning. I'm like, dad, is there anything mom needs help with? We celebrate our Christmas with my mom late. So yeah, Midlow's still got a little Christmas to do. Pray for us. Christmas lasts a long time here. So, but we're like going to my mom's on New Year's Day. So I'm like, dad, does mom need any help with anything else? Let her know. Tell her to call me. I have a free afternoon. Y'all, we have to be all up in today because nothing better than being able to go over and help my mom do something or cook something or do whatever because I'm learning how to stay in the moment with God and listen to him and hear him, have ears to hear, have eyes to see what God has in store for every day for us. Let's go to Proverbs 27.1. Proverbs 27.1. I love the Proverbs. Come on, y'all. They make us wise, don't they? Proverbs 27, 1. I'm getting hungry for lunch. That banana isn't lasting very long. Anybody else? Okay. Proverbs 27, 1. There it is again. Don't boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. That's We're, we're going to live in today, y'all, because tomorrow isn't promised, like I said. But tomorrow is... I, I would love to prophesy over all of you and say tomorrow is an amazing day. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be great. We're going to all be amazing tomorrow. And da, 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 ba. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say today's a great day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's what the word says. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because today's a great day. We're still breathing. Amen. We still got breath in our lungs. We still got a mouth to speak the name of Jesus. We still got hands to help people. We still got feet to, to walk out the, the gospel in. And, and this is it, y'all. We need to live in today doing the best that we can do today. And so that's it, y'all. Um, Matthew 6, let's go to that because I want to talk about, we've been in a lot of Matthew today. Um, because Lord, Matthew 6, verse 11 we're going to read the Lord's Prayer here. He's teaching them. They said, teach us how to pray, right? The disciples are, are asking him, to teach us how to pray. He says this. He says, this is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Come on, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm, there we go. I'm back on. I'm not quitting. Here we go. Satan, get away from my I, I think it's because the Lord's prayer is coming. Come on, y'all. Let's pray this out loud together. Let's read it again. I'm going to keep reading it here because the devil just tried to turn off my phone. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. You know, we should only be asking for today's bread. Remember out in the wilderness, the Israelites, God gave them manna for how many days? For today. Every morning they went and got their food for the day. They couldn't store it up for the next day or it would rot. They had just enough for their family for that day. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Y'all, that's, that's our sins too. That's our sins against people and our sins that people have done to us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. But verse 11 says, give us today our daily bread, y'all. We need to focus on just today, living in the peace of God today, trusting and obeying God today. Trust and obey all that's real is today. Do we, do we live for today and do terrible stuff because we, we don't care about tomorrow? No, 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 no. We have to trust God and obey him today. Do what's right. Pursue holiness. Love God. Love people. Make disciples today. Not live for the world today. Not spend all your money on, on, on worthless things today. No, live in the moment of today because today is all we have control over. Amen? And so give us today our daily bread. Lord, that is our prayer. I just pray right now for everyone on here, Lord. I pray that we are able to focus on the blessings, the love, the grace, the joy, the peace, the, the wonder of today with you.
Help us to trust you and obey you today. Help us to love our loved ones today. Help us to give you all the glory today. Help us to enjoy every day. Help us to spend every day with our eyes fixed on you, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Lord, thank you for enduring the cross so we can be here today. Today is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I love you all. God bless you. I pray, pray, pray that you all are blessed. Oh, I wanted to show you something really cool. So this is so awesome. I got this cool book. It's called Fighting Disease with Food. Actually, you know me and Tommy. We love a door-to-door -door salesman. And this girl came and she said she was trying to save money, trying to uh, save money for college. So she was selling books. So Tommy's like, here you go. I got a 20. I'll take a book. He goes, oh, my wife will love that one. I, you know I love some good, like, healthy eating, da, 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 that kind of stuff. So I wanted to, to hear how cool it was that, that this book, he didn't, know it was a, he didn't know it was written by an obvious Christian because they're ta she talks about the original diet in Genesis and how God's always the author of physical laws as well and how, like, how to eat according to the Bible and this kind of stuff. So it was really cool because there's 10 guidelines for good health. And one of them, you know, it talks about drinking a lot of water, um, getting fresh air, letting fresh air into your house, sunlight, you know, spending a lot of time outside. Just really, really cool things. But there's a cool part that says, trust in your divine, trust in divine power. It says, invite God into your day and talk to him about everything. Take time for spiritual development. Spend time studying the Bible and praying. Enjoy worship and fellowship with other believers at least once a week. And give your worries and anxieties to God. So, want to talk about something, y'all? Staying in the moment and spending time with God every day is going to keep you healthy, too. I think our God knows what he's talking about. I think the word of God is complete truth. Come on, y'all. We know that it's spending time with him is not only a good idea, it keeps us healthy. It keeps us safe. It keeps us protected. It keeps us in his peace. So I pray that for y'all today. So I pray for um, health and peace and joy for all of you. But I hope this was a great teaching for you. Share it with a friend who might need it. And I love my Chrissy Peterson. You crack me out. So um, yes, I will just pray that you are microwave breeder burritos. I did not find that in here yet, Chrissy, but maybe microwave burritos will be in here. I, it's slim, it's slim, but I, I, maybe I'll believe for you, my sis. I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.